Hi, this is Dwayne, and in the next few minutes I'd like to talk a little bit about the difference between major and minor. You can hear the difference there. Major, minor. that as minor, right? Well, so you recognize this as major. Now, all that, to say, when I say I'm playing in the key of C or the key of E flat or whatever, uh, what I mean is I'm basing my playing on the scale of that key. For example, when I play in the key of C, like I just was, I'm basing my playing on the scale of C major, okay? If I was playing in the key of E flat, be basing my playing on the scale of E flat, which goes like that, okay? Now, the word scale comes from the Latin word la scala, which means ladder. So a scale is a ladder of notes that climbs from the bottom rung, here's the bottom rung, it's called the root, and it climbs up eight notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to the octave note. The word octave comes from octava, which means eight, like, you know, octopus, octagon, uh, so scale notes are named by the distance from the root of the scale. For example, in the C major ladder, C major scale, uh, C is the root, or home base. So D is the second note of the scale, E is the third degree, F is the fourth degree, G is the fifth degree, and so on up the scale. Sixth, seventh, eighth, right? Up to the octave note. Now, look at your key piano keyboard and you'll see half steps, like C and sharp, C and C sharp, and whole steps, like C and D. The distance between a white key and its neighboring black key is always a half step. Why? Because you can squeeze nothing between them except dust, right? The distance between two white keys, though, is almost always a whole step because you are skipping a black key. You see, when I go from there to there, I'm skipping that, aren't I? Okay. Or when I'm going from there to there, I'm skipping that black key, right? Now, I say almost always, but not always, because the distance between E and F is a half step. Why? Because there's no black key in there. It's just a, it's just a, uh, there's nothing in there but dust, right? Nothing lies between them. Same with B and C. There's nothing between B and C except uh, a crack, right? The distance between two black keys is al almost always a whole step, right? That's a whole step. Why? Because it has a half step in between. That's a whole step. That's a whole step. Now, I say almost always because between E flat and G flat, that's a step and a half. Watch. It's not a half step. It's not a whole step. It's a step and a half. Okay? And also between B flat and D flat, which is a step and a half. Got that? Now, this becomes important later on, so pay real close attention here. The formula for a major scale is this. Whole step, wherever, wherever you start. Let's say we start on C, which is the root. Okay? And we go up a whole step. Is that a whole step? No. That's a whole step. Then we go up another whole step. Then we go up a half step. Then we go up a whole step. And then we go up a whole step. Then we go up a whole step. Then we go up a half step. Now you, you may say, well, so what? That's easy. That's all white notes. Yeah. It is when you're talking about the key of C, but any other key, it's not true. Let's start on the key of B. What's a whole step above B? Is it C? No, that's a half step. The rule is you got to go up a whole step. So the second note of the B scale is C sharp. The third note of the B scale is D sharp. By the way, why do I call that C sharp instead of D flat? Because if I did, there'd be no C in that scale at all. I'd skip from B to D flat, right? And the, another rule is you got to have every note of the uh, the alphabet, A through G, in any scale, okay? So that's B, C sharp is the second degree, up a whole step to D sharp is a uh, whole step, and then the fourth degree is F, up a half step, I'm sorry, E, up a half step from D sharp, then a whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So the B scale is really pretty easy because you use all the black keys, don't you? The only white keys you use are uh, B, and E. Now if I start on B flat, where's a whole step above that? It's C, isn't it? Whole step above that is D, half step is E flat, whole step is F, whole step is G, whole step is A, half step is B flat. See that? 
Okay, now that's that's a, a major scale. Let's talk a little bit about the fingering for a major scale. Anytime you start on a white key, well, hold, first of all, hold up your hand. Is your thumb as long as the other fingers? No. What are your longest fingers? Obviously, the three middle ones. Now, the black keys are further away from your hand than the white keys, right? So it makes sense to use your long fingers on the black keys whenever possible. Now, it's not always possible, but usually it is. So whenever possible, use your uh, uh, long fingers on the black keys, okay? And your thumb on the white keys, okay? Now, if I'm going to play an eight note scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I only have five fingers, it's obvious I have to use some, uh, some more than once, right? So here's the formula if you start on a white key. Use your thumb, second finger, third finger, and then quietly pass your thumb under your third finger. You see that? I'm not really moving my third finger very much. I'm passing my thumb under. Now descending it's the same way. You cross your third finger over. Again. You see that way I can play an eight note scale with just five fingers, right? Now if I start on D, here's the D scale. So the same fingering, one, two, three. Incidentally, your fingers are named one, two, three, four, five, right? Okay, you pass your thumb under your third finger, and you have enough fingers to go all the way up, and same way back down. You, when you run out of fingers, cross your third finger over. Okay, so that's the rule on all white keys except when you start on F. And the reason you, you have to use a different fingering on F is because on the fourth degree of the F scale, there's a B flat. And so you don't want to, you don't want to do this. You know, that's really awkward to pass your thumb under there. So use your fourth finger, your long finger on B flat, and then your thumb on C. So the fingering on the F scale is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Same way coming down, four, three, two, one, fourth finger over, four, three, two, one. Okay? So that's the fingering of, uh, the white keys. If you start on a black key, does it, uh, a black key scale, does it start Make sense to start on your thumb? No, we said our fingers are, well, our middle fingers are a lot longer, so start on the middle finger. Uh, it makes sense to me if you're going higher to start on a low middle finger, like your second finger, and then your third finger, and then when you come to a white key, pass your thumb under, and then second, third, fourth, thumb under. So the principle is keep your thumb on the black keys whenever possible, your long fingers on, uh, the black keys, okay? Fingering is not written in stone, by the way, okay? Nobody handed down a law that said you had to use a certain fingering. Now, over the years, people have discovered that some fingerings work better than others, and so uh, if you see a song with some fingering written in, use that as good advice, okay? In other words, try the fingering they suggest. It's not a law, but somebody has found out that probably works pretty well. However, everybody's hand's a little different. My hand's real small and like so. It's better suited for other things than piano playing. Uh, if you have long, narrow fingers, you know, a big stretchy hand, uh, you know, then you can do some things that I can't. So everybody's fingering a little different. Um, okay, let's go into a minor scale now. Once you know the formula for a major scale, you can move on to minor scales, and every major scale has a kiss and cousin, a relative minor scale. What makes it relative? He uses the very same notes as the major scale. It just starts on a different place in the scale. In this case, the sixth degree instead of the root. In other words, the relative minor scale to C major is the sixth, starts on the sixth degree of the C uh, scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. In other words, if I play the C scale but play it from A to A, that's called the A natural minor scale. It's natural because it uses the same notes as its relative major scale. Now once you know how to find a relative minor scale, then there's three, let me move down here so it's a little easier for you to see. Uh, once you know the natural minor scale, there's two other varieties of minor scales, okay? One is called the harmonic minor, and the harmonic minor raises the seventh degree of the scale, both on the way up and the way back down. So, notice here between the 6th degree and the 7th degree of the scale, I have a step and a half. That gives it that, that snake charmer kind of sound.
That's called the harmonic minor scale. There's also another kind of scale called the melodic minor, and the melodic minor raises the sixth and the seventh on the way up. It's not only the seventh, but the sixth and the seventh on the way up, but then restores it to the natural minor on the way down. Now, just between you and I, the melodic minor is not used uh, very much anymore. Okay, It was used more in the Middle Ages uh, during the chants and so on. But uh, you ought to know it. Now, do you have to really master all three minor scales? No, not really. Uh, you just have to... Uh, if I were you, I would just master uh, the uh, uh, harmonic minor scale, the one with the raised seventh. Why? Because that's the one that's used mostly in Western music. If I was playing a song... songs in minor keys in, in our Western music, and by Western music, music I don't mean country Western, I mean as opposed to, to uh, uh, Asiatic music, okay, Western, in other words, Europe and America, so it uses uh, a major 5-7 chord in a minor key, in other words, the primary chords in a minor key are 1, 4, and 5, and the 5 is major, okay. So if I were going to concentrate on learning one scale, I would learn the harmonic minor scale. Okay. Uh, now, like I said, what's true of uh, scales is also true of keys. When you hear people say, I'm playing in the key of A minor, what they mean is I, they're basing their playing on the scale of A minor. If they're playing on the scale of C minor, they're basing their playing on the scale of C minor, and so on. Okay. If they're playing in the key of D flat, they're basing their scale on the key of D flat. If they're basing in the key of E flat, they're basing their scale on E flat scale. So, okay? So that's it. Uh, major scales and their relative, uh, relative minors. So, thanks for being with me, and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.